Okay, welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to be going over the plugin dependencies that we're going to be using in our WordPress environment. Now, a lot of these plugins that we're going to be using aren't um, on the plugin store or plugin directory that WordPress normally provides. And this is because they're quite fresh, they're quite new, and they haven't been officially released, a lot of them. As of recording this, well, yesterday I noticed that WP GraphQL uh, announced that they're going to be doing a full release soon. Um, so that'll be a re-record of the series in 2020. But for now, we're going to be using the um, cutting edge, bleeding edge, um, new plugins, which aren't yet official, but are great to use. And I use them in my production applications. So the first plugin that we're going to be using is WP GraphQL. And this is uh, essentially the base for all of the other plugins that, are going to be, that we're going to be using in our setup. It's the uh, greatest plugin that I've come across, which enables a smooth transition from WordPress to Gatsby and allows us to plug in a GraphQL API, which uses a lot of the core um, WordPress taxonomies and posts and pages and lets you query just as you would in a GraphQL schema. Um, but I'll be going into that in more detail in the next video. We'll also be using WP GraphQL ACF, which allows us to use the Advanced Custom Fields plugin um, in conjunction with the WP GraphQL plugin and allows us to raise any of the Advanced Custom Fields to the schema. Um, we'll also be using WP Graph IQL um, graphical, which allows us to have a interface to um, interact with our WP GraphQL schema within the WordPress dashboard. Um, this would be great just to show you how the GraphQL schema works in WordPress um, without having to boot up any sort of third party applications. We'll also be using WP GraphQL Yoast SEO. Um, this is great for, again, raising fields surrounding the Yoast SEO plugin. Uh, for anyone who's been familiar with WordPress development, um, you'll have uh, normally an SEO plugin which allows meta descriptions and meta titles and meta images to be added to a post or page. Yoast SEO handles that, and using this plugin, you can raise the data you enter into the dashboard within the schema. Then we'll be using WP GraphQL Gutenberg. This allows us to query Gutenberg blocks and get back their attributes. Um, if you haven't built a Gutenberg block before, don't worry, we're not going to be covering that in much detail in this series. Um, but in a bonus video, I'll be covering how to do that with ACF. And speaking of which, there's another plugin which extends onto Gutenberg and extends to the ACF block editing experience and raises the ACF fields from blocks. If this doesn't make sense, don't worry, it'll make sense later on. Um, and then there's the Jamstack deployments plugin, which is official. Now this plugin's great, and there have been some uh, recent updates which have made it even better. I'll be going into how to use this, but essentially what it'll do is it'll build a new Gatsby site every time you make a change to a page or a post within your WordPress environment. Yoast SEO, again, this is for SEO configurations and meta information. And then Timber. So this is a bit advanced, but Timber is a plugin which allows us to use Twig templates and Timber themes. Um, I'll be using the Timber starter theme and then tweaking it from there. Um, we won't be doing too much with the theme. We're going to be using WordPress as a headless CMS, but later on I'll be showing you how, how to extend the WordPress editing experience using Timber to preview what the end website will look like before you have to statically generate it. And that's about it. Uh, we might come across other plugins um, such as CDN plugins, uh, duplicate post plugins, but for the most part, these are the core plugins you'll need. So you can go ahead and if you want, you can download the plugins as a zip and then unzip them into your plugins folder, which you can find within your new WordPress folder. Or in the bonus video I'm gonna be doing, we're gonna be using Composer to manage all of these plugins as dependencies, um, 
you can kind of imagine it as sort of like an NPM, but for plugins, um, where we'll be able to sort of use Composer to install all of these plugins at once without having to manually install them and activate them. So if you can go ahead and install these, and I'll be covering each one in the following videos.